Hey guys, we're trying something a little bit different today, something new, something with a little bit of a different format from my other videos. I wanted to make something that you could put on in the background easily and uh, watch my process. So this video is going to have more of a relaxed feel to it. There won't be a lot of talking, but I will cut in here and there to comment on my process. So break out your sketchbooks and join me. Today, I'll be painting Lady Amalthea from the 1982 Rankin-Bass film, The Last Unicorn. This piece is an original, meaning there won't be any prints made of it. So, much like Amalthea herself, it's one of a kind. But if you'd like to own this piece, it will be available for purchase in my shop, linked below. Since I'm trying out a new format and I'm posting on a day I don't usually post, if you could leave a like and a comment, that would help me out so much. So, please and thank you, I appreciate it. In other news, my Kickstarter to fund my enamel pin designs is just over $500 away from hitting its goal. Now, I didn't opt to put a pie chart of how the funds would be divided once the campaign was over, but I get basically nothing from it other than <laughs> making the pins real. So if you'd like to back that, that will be linked below as well. Thank you. Now, before I leave you guys to watch the rest of this process, I just want to take a second to gush about Posca markers. So Posca markers I discovered last year, I think, and they are so fun to use. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure they're acrylic based, um, but they're water-based paint in a marker form. So you don't have to have the hassle of cleaning a paintbrush um, or dealing with a palette. You're just drawing onto the canvas and it's so nice. I wish that I had been able to complete this painting fast enough that I could just put the footage up here unedited so that you could hear what it sounds like against the canvas because honestly ASMR but since this piece took like four hours um I had to speed it up and I don't think you want to hear that so to all my artist friends out there watching this I've included a link in the description to where you can get your own set and now here's the rest of the process Sometimes, it's hard to know where to start when it comes to a traditional piece. But as for me, I like to block in the colors in the background before focusing on anything in the foreground. Especially for this piece. Since Lady Amalthea is white, and the palette of the scene this is referencing is so dark, I'm able to utilize a lot of what is known as negative space. Now, negative space is like... Hmm. Imagine a character silhouette. And then imagine the inverse of that. All the space surrounding the character's silhouette is the negative space. It's a really neat concept that honestly can help strengthen your digital art abilities in particular, because good contrast is another important thing to consider when you're making art. So yeah, not mandatory, but it's something that helped me personally improve my skills, so I recommend looking into it. Thank you. 
So with Posca markers, my color palette was limited, so I got a little bit creative with this. I decided to start with a base of, I don't know what kind of marker this is, this is just some random little trash marker that I uh, got from maybe like Michael's, I don't know, it's not a fancy marker. Um, but then I was like, oh, I'm gonna do something big brained. I'm gonna lay down a layer of all these colors and then I'm gonna go over it with white. So in the next few minutes, you're gonna watch me really struggle with that. So behold my hubris. Just kidding, I guess I decided to work on those bushes in the background instead. This was to let that first little layer of paint dry. So then it was time to go back in with the white paint. And uh, one of the negative parts of Posca markers is if you push down on the tip too hard, sometimes a ton of paint comes out at once. And you can see here, there's like big blobs of white um, and I'm like trying to blend it in, but it really just uh, ended up being uneven on the main. So <laughs> um, hubris, my hubris. And then since there was so much paint, it started to bleed onto the neck. Um, so I just went in with a paper towel and tried to mop some of it up. <laughs> Thank you. 
So then finally, after all the marker details had been added, I decided to go back in with colored pencils just to add a little bit of texture and then also to add gradients to it. This really helped with like depth um, and it added a layer that I really enjoyed to the piece. And then lastly, I went in with this like pearlescent metallic paint that my roommate suggested. Uh, she let me borrow hers because otherwise that wouldn't have happened. So shout out to her. Thank you. Um, and it really just added a nice layer of fanciness to this. And here's the final product. You can see the shininess a little bit when I tilt it in the sun. Ooh, so fancy. So again, if you'd like to own this, the link will be down below. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. The interaction really helps boost my channel. A big, fat, cantankerous thank you to my $10 patrons, Lady Letitia, Orbital Bacon, and Ivy. Thank you so much. And my $5 patron, Mistress Mercury. If you'd like your name read out at the end of one of these videos, please consider joining my Patreon. That will be linked below as well. It's a great way to support this channel. Alright, thank you all. Bye!